All righty. Well, speaking of a grand prize, we've got to come up with one because we're going to close the program here today with a little contest between me and the great Brian Last because we play this game quite often on the drive through Guess the Program, where we bring a program out of our collection and tell the other one what the lineup is, and that person has to guess what the year and the location was. And when we did this here very recently on your program, Brian, you put in a bunch of ringers on me. I've never heard such god obscure names and lackadaisical cards. You were trying to make me look like I didn't know what I was doing. And I'll have you know that I can take care of that for myself. I don't need your help. So what we've done here to settle this thing is we've just grabbed, I've grabbed three classic wrestling programs at random from my collection, and you've grabbed three classic wrestling programs from your collection, and we're going to give each other these lineups, and we're going to see who can do best. Can we get two out of three? Can we get all three? Can we get zero out of three? Who's going to have the best record here? And I know you're probably going to try to fuck with me again, no, but I'm, I'm giving you a fair shot with, I give you major wrestling shot. names here over the last hundred years. Just as I did. I don't know what part of, I, I don't know how I fucked with you playing guess the program by asking you to guess the program. But okay, got, there was, there was one time a guy in the main event I'd never even heard of. It was so obscure. Well, you see, you're making me question. I had some ones here. I thought were kind of going to be easy for you. A layup. And now I question whether I'm going to give you the easy ones and make you look good. Oh, oh, okay. I'll see there now. See, now you're going to tease what you're taking away from me before I even saw it. I don't know. All right, I'll start. All right, you start. This is, see, this one's going to be so easy. It's going to be too easy, but I'll do it anyway. All right. Chief White Owl, 244, Cherokee, versus Pedro Godoy, Havana, Cuba, 238. The Stomper... Versus Jack Murphy. Good old Jack Murphy. There'll be a four girl... Jack, Jack Dropkick Murphy, they called him. There'll be a four girl tag team match. Also a tag team match for the championship of the world. The challengers, the Hells Angels. Versus the champions, Lou and Roy Klein. <laughs> Danny Hodge. Versus Big Sokka. 287 and a half pounds out of Tokyo. He is a manager. Well, and that all that's Siji Sakaguchi. That is correct. One of Enoki's longtime right hand men. Ernie Ladd versus Flying Fred Curry. Paul Diamond, 235 out of Miami Beach, versus Lou Thez, Phoenix, 229 pounds. For the British Empire Heavyweight Champion. Actually, it doesn't even say it was a title match. The British Empire heavyweight champion. Now, wait a minute. That ain't going to be Billy Robinson. Is that going to be Whipper Billy Watson? Whipper Billy Watson versus Terry White. From Montreal, 235, Bill Terry versus Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. New Jersey, 230 pounds. Edouard Carpentier, France, 237 pounds. Versus Wild Bull Curry. <laughs> Coincidentally enough, the same weight out of Hartford, Connecticut. And finally, the main event, a lumberjack tag team match with a special referee that you already know where this is from. The special referee's yeah. Lord Layton. <laughs> 20 men stationed around the ring to ensure law and order. The mighty Igor, 286 out of Poland. And Ivan Kamelkoff. Out of Kalmakoff. Russia. Kalmakoff, excuse not, not me. Not Camel Cough. 238 out of Russia. He's not a heavy smoker. He doesn't have a Camel Cough. Well, he was the manager here, so it's the mighty Igor and his manager versus the United States heavyweight champion, the Sheik, with his manager. And his manager. The Weasel out of Syria, 195 pounds. Abdullah Farouk. All right, so we are in the Kobo Arena in Detroit, obviously. Nobody else did it. Did cards like that. And by the way, Terry White, the noted challenger for the British Empire title, that's because Whipper Billy Watson came down from Toronto as a special attraction and they needed something to 
showcase him. Um, you know, the, the only thing, this is not obviously during the 72 through 74 promotional war with Bruiser in Indiana. This, they just, Sheik booked giant cards in the Kobo and a lot of these matches probably ended up on his television program. I don't see any reason why Stomper versus Jack Murphy should not be given away on free TV. 11 matches. Uh, as far as a year, Rogers, Buddy Rogers is the key here because his comeback for the Sheik was short and done pretty much probably as a test run for himself as well as a favor to the Sheik. And I am going to say, and also because Lou Klein and Lou and Roy Klein were still brothers at that point. Um, Hell's Angels, the World Tag Team Champions. Chief Hell's White Angels Al. were the challengers. Well, but still they're in the World Tag Team title picture. Right. Uh, Carpentier on the card. I'm going to say 1967. The date, Saturday, September 13th, 1969. Damn! The Kobo Convention Arena. Now, 11 wait great a, so matches. Wait First bout, 8.30 p.m. Where did Rogers make a comeback in 67? Or am I... You may be confusing that with this things. one. In 69, he had the Detroit comeback. Or if you call this a comeback, I don't know what you yes, call this. Yes, didn't he do a brief comeback in 67? I have to consult Somewhere. the Tim Hornbaker book, the fine biography of Buddy Rogers. All right. Well, I'm I'm two years off, and I got the town. You got the town. All right. In that case, I will go next. And see, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give you one that's not unheard of, that you ought to be able to figure this out. The opening match, the Red Shadow versus Jack Welch. Second event, George McCreary versus Ali Vaziri. Third match, Don Carson versus Ron Fuller. In the fourth event, Mike Graham will face Dick Slater. If Mike Graham wins, he gets a match with Slater's manager, Dandy Jack. For a tag team championship, Joe and Paul, the LeDuc brothers, taking on Rip Hawk and Billy Spears. The Mad Magician, Billy Spears, so-called because he could produce a foreign object from any part of his body. There's also an 18-man battle royal with a $9,000 jackpot featuring all of the aforementioned competitors, plus Haystacks Calhoun, Tex McKenzie, and the Great Malenko. And the main event is for a championship. Dusty Rhodes versus number one, Paul Jones. Wow, this is all over the place. I thought it was one place, then I thought it was another place. Uh-huh. And then I think it's another place. You used to do a little, but a little didn't get it, so a little got more and more. Give me the opening match again. Red Shadow versus Jack Welch. What was the second match? Ali Vaziri versus George McCreary. And the main event was Dusty against who? Paul Jones? Number one, Paul Jones. It says that in the program, number one? Well, no, I'm just, because that's the way we all Well, know. no, that matters, as, as opposed that... to, As opposed to the 30s wrestler, Paul Jones. But if it said number one, Paul Jones, it would actually put a year on it. All right, in well, all actually, in the, in the text of the article about the main event, it says, Paul Jones is an egotistical drugstore cowboy who needs to get taught a lesson by the man who is not only number one, but is also the uncrowned champion, and that person is me. So he was potentially referring to himself as number one, and Dusty was playing off of that. Okay, I'm going with Tampa, Florida, just because I think it's in the Florida territory. I thought it may have been Knoxville or Alabama at different points as you were going through the card. But then I realized, because of a few things, it's probably Florida, the main event being one of them. The fact that it's Dusty against Paul Jones for what is probably a state title. Ali Vaziri was not yet 
any of the other gimmicks. He's still using his real name, so Vern has just started sending him around. And by the way, for the youngsters out there, Ali Vaziri would go on to become greater known or more widely known as the Iron Sheik. Dick Slater has Dandy Jack as a manager. And again, he's against Mike Graham. Mike Graham didn't really work too many places outside of the Florida Territory. And I'm picking Tampa because out of all the towns in the territory, I think that'd be the program you'd pick. I can't imagine you're going to hit me with a West Palm Beach. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a real fucking... Kicked it a groin. That'd be just a dick thing to do, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going with Tampa, Florida, 1975. Eh. Oh, fuck. You got neither the town nor the year because it is Miami Beach. Oh, you did do it, you see? Miami Beach. Well, no, Miami Beach was a weekly town. as It ran more and drew better than Tampa most of the time. And it was January 2, 1974. Fuck, I was going to say 74, too. Shit! Yes, you were. Fuck. And as a matter of fact, this makes sense because the first time I saw Ali Vaziri, who at that point weighed about 212 pounds and had washboard abs and a full head of hair, uh, was in the spring of 74 when he came up from Florida to Tennessee and was doing jobs on television. So, yes, January 1974, Miami Beach, the sun and fun capital of the world. Okay, so sun and fun. the score now yeah. is I've got, we're going to get one point for each, if one point for the town right and one point for the date right. And I've got one point because I got the town, if not the date, and you have no points. I got the territory. The town, the territory, goddamn. That could be like what's in New Orleans. No, Oak City, same thing. All See right. what I mean there? All right, well, let's go to... I got one here for you. All right. The opening bout, two out of three falls. Tom Drake versus Tor Yamato. Okay, hold on, Drake, Yamato. Bout two, best two out of three falls. Lester Welch versus Carlos Rodriguez. Okay. About three, once again, best two out of three falls. Billy Wicks versus Rocky Colombo. Okay. And the main event, which is a tournament match and an elimination for a championship I will not name here. Best two out of three falls. Spider Galento <laughs> versus Sputnik Monroe. Okay, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh... I won't say Ellis Auditorium. Could this have been one of the outdoor shows? Probably not, though. When you said Tom Drake and Tori Yamato, I was going to head for Birmingham in 1959 or 60, but now we're back in Memphis with Billy Wicks and Spider Galento against Sputnik Monroe. Was that the Tennessee heavyweight title tournament? Was that going on in the summer of 19... 59? Well, you could just add a couple of points to your list there because you got the city and you got the date. And I said I had some easy ones for you. This was one of them. Uh huh. Monday, August 24th, 1959, the week after the big outdoor show, Billy Wicks versus Sputnik Monroe with Rocky Marciano as the referee. All right. And actually, it says it right here NWA suggests tournament. National Wrestling Alliance officials suggested this past week that promoter Buddy Fuller schedule a short four-week tournament to decide the Tennessee championship. Rocky Marciano reported the action after last week's championship match was stopped and the NWA ruled the title vacant. Four tournament bouts are scheduled for tonight. Bada boom. So I've got three points and you got none yet. I'm focusing on the history. You're making this about some sort of thing we should go to prize picks for. Why don't we <laughs> talk about the history here? <clears throat> All right, well, let's talk about some history here. Here's a nice lineup for you. From the opening match, Jim Dalton versus Robert Fuller. Next match, tag team match, Roberto Soto and Ricky Gibson, that's Robert's older brother, by the way, for the young folks, 
against Bobby Shane and the aforementioned Billy Spears. My first thought is Atlanta, but let's keep going. A tag team match, Bob Armstrong versus Tom Jones. Uh, no, shit. What am I saying? They've, they've got well, what this. What a tag out. team match that is. Well, no, they've, they've got this laid out a they've little. Holograms? Re reading. Let's try this. <laughs> no, they have. It's. <laughs> they put a versus instead of an and. And I'm trying to figure out how the fuck they've. All right. It's, it's, they're trying to say. It's going to be Bob Armstrong and Tom Jones versus Stan Vashon and Cowboy Bobby Duncan. Then there's going to be a 10-minute intermission. Then the triple main event starts with a pile driver legal match. You cannot be disqualified, fined, or suspended for using a pile driver. Buddy Colt versus Bob Orton Sr., for the World Junior Heavyweight title, Danny Hodge defends against Hiro Matsuda. And finally, in the big main event, the Funk Brothers, Terry and Dory Funk Jr. versus Tim Mr. Wrestling Woods and his partner, Mr. Wrestling Number 2. Okay, this is a loaded show, and my first thought was Atlanta, and at various points I realized it could be a swerve and it could be Florida. because. There's a lot of Florida there, but also this is around the period of time during the Atlanta wrestling war where a lot of Florida talent worked in Georgia. Eddie Graham was doing a lot with that office, and eventually he was able to hand out points to people like Jack Briscoe. I'm going with Atlanta, Georgia. It's a loaded show, maybe even the Omni. Atlanta, Georgia, 1973. Boom! On both counts. Atlanta City Auditorium, October 5th, 1973. Ah, City Auditorium. So you got two points there for place and date. And by crack, and what a loaded show. Can you imagine? That's why Atlanta got the reputation of being the, you know, hottest city in the country during that promotional war because of the talent that was being sent in by Florida. And uh, from this period of time and later on through mid-1974, Jared Jarrett was sending guys down from Memphis as well, from the Tennessee Territory. Lawler worked Atlanta a lot in 1974, which is where he met Bobby Shane and got the crown and the idea for the King of Wrestling. There was, it was literally the, the top talent or most of the top talent from Florida, Tennessee, this, the talent that was still with the NWA office in Georgia, and different international stars like the Funks that would come in because they were close with Eddie Graham and, you know, the NWA wanted to win the War of Atlanta. They didn't want to lose the biggest city in the South at that time to an outlaw promotion. So, for, but again, what a run. You know, every top wrestler in the goddamn business went through Atlanta over those two years. All right. And every big star of the previous few years in Atlanta was working opposition. I mean, until they ran yeah. out of things they could do, because they couldn't add too many new people to the roster that were going to work. That was pretty hot, too. It was. Well, <laughs> Ann Gunkel was doing business that a lot of wrestling promotions in normal times would have killed for, and they were the opposition that were fighting from underneath. All right, I got one here for you. Let's see if you're fighting underneath on this one. All righty. It's two to three. I'm ahead. The opening bout, Bob Cummings versus Larry Hamilton. Bout two, Cyclone Anaya versus Cowboy Carlson. The final preliminary bout, Sonny Myers versus Harry Lewis. <laughs> the semifinal, Sugi Sito or Suji Sito. Suji Sito. Versus Danny Savage. And the main event, two out of three falls, Don Evans versus Argentina Rocca. All right. Good Lord. I got I ain't got a lot of Larry Hamilton. This it almost has to be it's either the northeast or a rogue 
Carolina show. Larry Hamilton worked in the Northeast uh, with his brother Jody in the late 50s, early 60s. Larry Hamilton became the Missouri Mauler later on. Cowboy Carlson and... Uh, was it Hurricane or Cyclone at various times? Anaya. They were out of the picture of any mainstream card by the early 60s, I think. Sonny Myers, you would think... Missouri, but as we established in this game previously, he worked in the olden days around a lot of places. Danny Savage, ah, Suji Sito. Could be. When you go with Don Evans, Don and Moose Evans were partners and, and alleged brothers, but Raka is the big thing. This has to be a Northeastern spot show or some kind of fringe Carolina's event when Raka tried to go opposite, I would think, uh, or work opposition to Vince Sr., but that doesn't really, none of these other people fit that. Um, or could it have been that Raka was just, this is early, mid-50s, and Raka is just booked out in one of these weird locations, and I was correct about Missouri. Now that I look at Larry Hamilton and Sonny Myers on the same card. <sighs> you know what? It's a spot show in Missouri in 1957. The date, Monday evening, February 22nd, 1954. Ah! The location, the Northside Coliseum, Fort Worth, Texas. Texas. Son of a bitch. Well, all That's right, no points. I got zero. That was no that. points, just to make no sure points. you got that. No points. So it's going to come down to this, apparently. My last program, it's still three to two. You're one behind. You can either tie or go ahead here. And considering some of the other things that we've said and done here, it's amazing that I picked this up. Are you ready for this card? It's an all or nothing to make or break. I'm nervous. I don't know. The opening match. Hogan Wharton versus The Brute. And by the way, uh, I've got a picture of Hogan Wharton here. And I got to be honest with you, if he ever became anybody else under another name, I don't recognize him. But he's big and popular, according to the program. Second match, Bad Boy Hines. Remember, one of the brother team, there was Bad Boy and there was Billy Hines. Bad Boy Hines versus Duke Kiyomoka. Third match. Lynn Crosby versus Torbellino Blanco. Fourth event, the semifinal, Pepper Gomez versus Adnan KZ. And finally, the main event, two out of three falls, no time limit, no disqualification, not Lazy booking because it meant something. Danny McShane versus Wild Bull Curry. The obvious thing would be to think Houston, Texas, although it could be San Antonio. It could be, I don't think it would be El Paso. It could be San Antonio. It could be even Dallas at any point in the 50s. It's definitely in the 50s. I'm going to go with Houston, Texas. Or a small spot show outside of Houston, which would count as <laughs> Houston, because no one's going to pick Gabbleston. Um, Danny McShane versus Bull Curry, no DQ, anything goes. Is there? Um, who are the referees listed? Uh, the referee listed is Otto Cuss, K U S S. Right, you remember Otto? I remember. I know the name from Texas programs. What was the semi? And Lynn Crosby, by the way, would later on be known better as Lenny Montana when he appeared in The Godfather. What was the semi? 
the semifinal, Pepper Gomez versus Adnan Casey. Not Chief Billy White Wolf and not Sheik Adnan Casey, yeah. just Adnan Casey. That's the one that really threw me off the most, actually, because, uh, huh. I'm going with Houston, Texas. Pepper Gomez is there. Da -da -da. Bull Curry and Danny McShane. Danny McShane had really slowed down by the end of the decade, except for really special appearances. But I don't know anything about what built this up, so it could literally just be any time. I'm going with based on Pepper Gomez. See, I can't. I was about to say a year, but I'm thinking, did Adnan El Casey wrestle that far back? I'm going to go a little later than I wanted to. 1957, Houston, Texas. Well, now, wait a minute. You said earlier uh, that you said it was like 1959, and now you said you're going later, but that's earlier. Oh, no. I, I was actually so which thinking, is it? What, I was actually thinking it would be 55, and then uh, okay, I'm, gonna go with, I'm going with 57 based on Adnan El Casey. Well, let me explain something to you, my fine young man. You won... The because you phrased it Houston, Texas, or a spot show close by. <laughs> well, does 60 miles count as close? Beaumont, Texas. Yes, that absolutely counts because it was booked out by okay. the Houston office, and no one would pick right. Beaumont, yes. Texas. Beaumont, Texas, at the Sportatorium in Beaumont on Saturday evening, May 7, 1960. Oh. So you got the, the the place, you missed the year, and we're tied at three and three. You want to go to a? You have any more programs there? You want to go to a lightning I did, round? I didn't. I thought two out of three ain't bad. I didn't know we would tie. I don't. But uh, hold on here. I can. I can. Re, you reach one. I'll reach. I can one. give you an easy one. Depends on how we want this to end. I can <laughs> give you an easy one. I just. I think the people just want it to end. I don't know. They really want to particular resolution out of this see this you pick this you pick one i'll pick one and let's see what happens okay this is too easy i can't do this one let me go to All this right, one. wait a minute i'm looking for one that you want to get okay me. you ready yeah go ahead jesse james versus the magnificent chevier wait a minute that's chevalier it's not spelled like that here <laughs> well they, they had our time Spelling Chevalier back in those days. Go ahead. It's not Maurice Chevalier, but Golden Boy versus Hobo Brazil. Oh, come on. All right. I want a I year and I want an arena. Hold on. Okay. Tony Zolo versus, apparently returning from the dead, Gorgeous George. And finally, the main event, four-man tag team match, Frank Scarpa and Cowboy Blatz. Versus Wild Bull Curry and Bruno Sam Nartino. And that was you want an arena to it was the 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 Boston area. All right, under the Beaumont, Texas rules, I'll give you the Boston area. It was the Boston Arena. Okay, well the Boston area, because that was one of those uh Pfeffer fed uh, Tony Santos outlaw shows in the Boston area. And because of the names that are being parodied and the fact that that happened back in the early to mid 60s, I'm going to say 1964. Boston. You get one point for Boston. It's at the All Boston right. Arena Annex. Thursday, December 9th, 1965. God damn it, that I was either going to say 64 or 65, and I went, all right. Hey, real quick, before we move on, let's get, who's your favorite of all the fake names and real names here in this Jack Pfeffer Fed program? Golden Boy, Gene Dundee, Schlitz Von Erich, <laughs> Lucas. Hercules Taylor, Laverne Gagner. <laughs> that one is just filled with spite. Hold on. Yeah, it's filled with spite. Ilio DiPaolo, spelled D-I-P-A-U-L-O. Jumping Joe Brewer. Hobo Brazil. Gorgeous George. 
the Boston Bruiser, and finally, Vilmer Snader. <laughs> oh, and actually, excuse me, there's some more here. Bruno Sam Nartino, as well as Bruno Sam Martino. Jimmy Valentine. Hans Schmidt. This is the real Hans Schmidt. Luthez. Gene Karniski. And it's not Gene Karniski. The Mad Mongol. Cowboy Blatz. Johnny Powders. Johnny Powders? Powders. <laughs> Out of that whole bunch, I like Hobo Brazil because it just so it just says it. Here's a hobo from Brazil. I was in the back at the Louisville Gardens. Bobo was working in the Tennessee territory, and this was God was 77 or 78. So at that point, he'd already been wrestling for 30 years, right? And he was nearing his early 50s. And he's waiting to go out, and I'm standing there because I've just taken some pictures, and, you know, I didn't want to just jump in front of Bobo's entrance. And as he's kind of jogging in place, one of the the uh, ushers, the, the, the Andy Frayne security ushers that used to work the gardens, one of them would always watch the back door to the alley, and the, uh, another one came through to do something. And you heard them because the, the sound carried in this back holding area in the gardens. It was metal doors and concrete walls and it would just echo and even though they were whispering you could hear him who's that big black guy over there and the other guy said well that that's bozo brazier and bobo <laughs> looked over and he looked back at me and he had that voice he sounded a little bit like ernie ladd but he was much lower speaking he said 30 years in the wrestling business and it's bozo brazier <laughs> 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 uh, it's so fucking funny <laughs> all right you got one more because you got one point there so you're all winning. right and i'm and God damn, i'm trying here. to i'm trying to find one for you that's not a gimme um, i've given you that was a gimme if that it was boston come on all right it could have been fucking i don't know north hollywood all right um oh geez no that's not this is there a main event without this fucking guy? <sighs> We're going with Memphis, Tennessee. No. Nineteen. <laughs> All right, asshole. It's Mister Asshole. I got, I got one for you. Then here's the card: Sonny Myers versus Bulldog Danny Pletchis. Has Sonny Myers been mentioned on any other wrestling show as much as he's been mentioned here this week? No, and somehow weeks? he just pops up everywhere. <laughs> he's all over the goddamn place. Paul Bunyan versus oh. Leaping Larry Shaney and the er, Le Leaping Shane? Larry Shane Shaney Leaping Larry Shane and the Bruiser. Well, well, when you say the Bruiser, uh, well, keep going. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. Peggy Allen versus Kitty Adams. Dick Steinborn versus Art Nelson. And Doug Donovan versus Ricky Romero. Again, I think we're in Texas. I don't think you'd hit me with New Mexico. We're in Texas. We're either in Houston, Texas, or a town they would possibly book out talent to. Or maybe somewhere else, like El Paso, or even San Antonio. San Antonio had a lot of really good programs. The El Paso ones are good, too. Give me the card once again, uh, the main event. Okay, and, and actually, I gave, it, I gave it to you in the wrong order because I'm tired. Doug Donovan versus Ricky Romero. Doug Donovan would later on become one of the Von Brauners, correct? Dick Steinborn versus Art Nelson. Peggy Allen versus Kitty Adams. A handicap match with Paul Bunyan against Larry Shane and the Bruiser. And Sonny Myers versus Bulldog Pletchis. 
That's the main event, or Rita Romero was the main event. That, that, that's that's the main event. Is Sunny Sunny Myers and Bulldog Plexus was, was the main event. <sighs> Could that be a Houston show? I don't know. Could that draw a house? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm gonna. I don't think you'd hit me with back to back Houston programs. Cause that'd be a dickish thing to do, or Houston related territory or, or towns. I'm but if you if you if you think about other things I've said off air, nevertheless, <sighs> off air you talk about the fucking gardener. Um, <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with San and I'm going with El Paso. Nine, uh, 1958. Oh, my God. That's the year you got it. We're yeah. still tied. Yeah. We're still fucking tied. Yeah. It's Amarillo, Texas. Fuck. I should have Amarillo that. by morning up from San Antonio. And the only... <laughs> I told you I'd been looking at this Amarillo book of, that Scott Teal did. Yes, you And did. that's what I could reach. So I said, okay, I was trying to find a main event that Dory Funk Sr. was not in to give it away completely. And, but it was Amarillo, but you still got, we're still tied. Fuck it. I'm saying we're kissing each other's sisters. And I've seen your sister. I win. So I'm getting the better end of the deal. I win because you cheated. You didn't have the program. You went to a book. You just went through something in a book. That's not well, how it was the, the game lined works. Up. You forfeit. I win. That's cheating. Wait a minute. Hold on here. I've been. <laughs> I've been disqualified. Procedural error. I apologize. All right. I'm disqualified. Great Brian last wins four to four on a disqualification. And this has been Guess the Program here on your show. 